Hello and welcome to this session in which we would look at the idea of dividend. What is a dividend and how does it work from an accounting perspective? Well, dividend is the company's distribution of the profit to the shareholder. And that's the big idea. What does that mean? It means a company operates their business. They generate revenues. Then they incur expenses. And we hope that we have more revenues than expenses. As a result, the company will generate net income, which is profit. Then what's going to happen to this profit? The company is going to take this profit and either keep it, keep the profit, or distribute the profit. So first, 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 basically they keep it. And we, when we keep the profit, think about it. Where do we close revenues and expenses? Well, we close them to retained earnings. So they keep it in an account called retained earnings, which is the earnings that we will retain. Then some of that profit will be paid out. When we pay out the profit to the shareholders, we call it dividend. So the point I am trying to make is this. The first point is dividend comes out of retained earnings. Retained earnings is the company's profit. Company's profit is generated from revenues minus expenses. So that's the first idea I want you to know. So dividend comes out of retained earnings. Why is this concept important? Because sometimes the company could give you a distribution that's not out of retained earnings, then that's not dividend. We call those liquidating dividend. We covered this in another recording and you need to know about liquidating dividend for tax purposes. Liquidating dividend is beyond the scope of this lesson, but the point I'm trying to make is you have to be aware that not all distribution is dividend. The distribution has to come out of retained earnings. So I want to emphasize this point as much as possible. Cash dividend, when we pay cash dividend, and usually we pay cash, we pay the dividend in form of cash, reduces both assets and equity. Of course, it does reduce his asset because we're paying out money, cash. So it's going to reduce cash and reduce, uh, reduce equity. We will see later in, in the next session that we have something called, rather than cash dividend, sometimes what the company would do rather than paying cash because they want to keep the cash, rather than paying cash, we will give the shareholders stock stock dividend and we'll talk about this next stock dividend will not reduce assets and equity it comes out of retained earnings we'll see how later but it doesn't reduce both assets and liability uh, assets and equity so cash dividend reduces both assets and equity now do all company do all companies pay dividend and the answer is no not all company pay, pays dividend and the question should be why not when the owner want to have all the money and the answer is there are many reasons for that one is the creditors. So if you have creditors, if you are borrowing money, the creditors may impose certain restrictions or limitation on your retained earning. For example, they will tell you your retained earning should not fall below half a million. What does that mean? It means once your retained earnings is a half a million, you, you can no longer pay dividend because you have to keep it at a half a million or above or any type of restriction. So that's why you cannot pay out the dividend. They simply, they tell you, if we're going to lend you the money, you have to suspend your dividend or you have to pay only a certain percentage of your profit and dividend. So my, they may impose restriction and limitation. That's one reason. Another reason, and that's basically the main reason why companies don't pay dividend, is for internal finance for growth and expansion. What does that mean? It means when the company makes a profit, they need this money to reinvest this profit into more profitable project. Take, take at a company like Google. Google, they make a lot of profit. A lot. Billions. Do they pay it out in dividend? No. Same thing with Amazon. Do they pay out in dividend? No. At least not yet. Why? Because these companies, they are still growing and they still have many profitable projects they can invest in. So as a result, if that's the case, they're not going to pay out the cash. And as an investor, as an owner, you are better off keeping the cash at the company because Jeff Bezos, he's better off finding project. You're better off letting him find the project and refinance your money. So that's why you don't pay out your profit and dividend. Well, some companies, they, they want to simply keep the cash on hand. Why? Bad times. Well, we're making profit this year, next year, but maybe in year three, year four, we may not make profit if the company goes south. So that's why we want to keep a cushion, cash on hand for bad times. Now, especially tech companies and pharmaceutical. Tech and pharma, they're always growing. They're always trying to find new projects. That's why they, they are very conservative when it comes to dividend. 
and you have to plan your dividend payment properly. So you have to plan the growth of dividend payment in a conservative, proper way. What do I mean by this? Once you, once a company starts to pay dividend, that gets factored, that gets baked, that gets assumed that the company will always pay dividend. It's not a law, but the investors will expect dividend. When you buy a company and the company is currently paying dividend, the company suddenly cannot stop paying dividend. They can, there is nothing against the law. No one can stop them. But if they do stop, the stock will suffer. I know I'm aware of two companies that they had to suspend their dividend for a quarter or two. BP, British Petroleum, and GE, General Electric. British Petroleum, when they had that spill in the Gulf of Mexico, because they needed this money for the cleanup, and GE during the economic crisis, because they were involved in lending money. So what they did, they suffered a lot of losses. And as a result, when they suspended their dividend for, I believe, two quarters, they get hammered. Therefore, companies, they plan their dividend very, con not conservatively. They assume once they start to pay dividend, they cannot stop. Also, companies they have, if they don't pay dividend, they have to let the users of the financial statement know, give them an idea whether they plan to pay in the future or not plan in the future. Because as an investor, that's relevant. That's most relevant. As an investor, you're getting dividend. You're getting cash. And that's what you are really interested in. So the best way to show you at a sample company is to show you, look at Microsoft. So this is a graph of Microsoft since, I don't know, 19, uh, 1986 when the company went public. So notice all the way, S's are split, which we'll talk about in the next session. So the first time, although Microsoft from 1986 till 2002, they were making a lot of profit. But guess what? The first time they paid dividend in February 17, 2003, I still remember that day, they pay eight cents per share. Then they paid, then they double it, 16 cent per share, which, which, which they didn't really double it because they skipped one quarter. Therefore, they paid for two quarter. Then they pay, then they kept paying eight cent. Then they paid a special dividend, three dollar dividend because the investors kept telling them, you know, we have a lot of cash on hand. Give us some cash. So they paid three dollars and eight cent. Then they went back to eight pennies, eight pennies, eight pennies, eight pennies. Eight pennies they they grow it in 2006 to nine pennies nine pennies nine pennies then they grow it to 10 pennies in 2007 and if you keep going 13 pennies and 16 pennies in 2011 28 pennies in 2014 39 pennies in 2016 and now they are paying 62 pennies so notice they started paying eight pennies in 2003 and 20 years later they're paying 62 pennies the point i am trying to make is this companies plan their dividend they plan to pay the dividend basically forever so that's why you have to be very careful once you start to pay dividend and how much you pay in dividend before we proceed i would like to remind you whether you are an accounting student or a cpa candidate to take a look at my website farhatlectures.com i help you to pass your cpa exam i help you during your accounting education don't shortchange yourself invest in your career my subscription will give you access to additional resources lectures, multiple choice, true false, that's going to help you understand the material better in conjunction with your CPA review course, in conjunction with your accounting courses. This is a list of all the courses that I have on my website that include multiple choice, true false lectures, all organized by chapter and course. My CPA resources are aligned with your Becker, Roger, Wiley, and Gleam. So you can go back and forth between my material and your CPA review course. I also give you access to 1,500 previously AI CPA released questions in addition to thousands of multiple choice questions with detailed solution. If you have not connected with me on LinkedIn, please do so. Take a look at my LinkedIn recommendation, like this recording, share it with others, connect with me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit. The best way to illustrate the concept of dividend is to look at an example. So the dividend is not really a dividend, is not really a liability is not really an obligation until the board of directors declares the dividend. So once the board of directors declare the dividend, the board of directors are the people who are, who are in charge of the company. Those people are elected by the shareholders. Then it becomes a liability. There are three dates that are relevant to dividend. And those, that's the date, date of declaration. So let's assume a company declared a $1 million dividend. So what they do, remember, dividend comes out of retained earnings so once they declare it you reduce retained earnings we declared a million dollar worth of dividend we credit dividend payable for a million this is the date of declaration the first date 
Then we have the date of record. On the date of record, we don't make an entry. On the date of record, we determine who are the owners of the company, who owns the stock as of that date. For example, today's date is December 23rd. Let's assume the company today declared the dividend. This is the declaration date. The date of record, January 5th. So you have to own the stock by January 5th. And the date of payment will be January the 15th. January the 15th. So what happened is this. If you own the stock on January the 5th, you get the payment on January the 15th. On January the 15th, basically, we pay off the liability, we debit dividend payable, and we credit cash. Simply put, we get rid of the payable, and what we're left with is we reduced earning by a million, and we reduced cash by a million. Remember what I told you, cash dividend reduced both assets and reduces equity. In contrast, what we're going to be looking at next, when we look at stock dividend, it's going to be different. The best way to learn more about dividend is to actually go to my website, farhatlectures.com, and work multiple choice questions and look at additional resources. Once again, don't shortchange yourself. I can help you with your accounting career. I can help you pass your CPA exam. Invest in yourself. The CPA exam is a lifetime investment. Study hard. Good luck. And of course, stay safe.